It's now time for the Manitoba Junior Hockey League 5-5. Five and five. What's going on around the league? Let's find out with five topics in five minutes with your host, Darnell Duff. Yes, indeed, folks, that is right. It is the MJHL 5 in 5, where myself, Darnell Duff, will be joined by esteemed broadcasters from across the Manitoba Junior Hockey League. On a week-to-week -week basis, we are going to be picking five topics that we think are relevant and that we think you're going to want to hear about. And we'll talk about each topic for one minute. So that is why it is called 5 in 5. Pleased to be joined today by the voice of the Steinbach Pistons, Dave Anthony. Dave, uh, first of all, before we get down to 5 on 5, or 5 by 5, I should say, it's been a solid start to the season. Uh, already some great parody. Your thoughts early on the campaign. Yeah, there's been some really pleasant surprises and a few disappointments, which I think we're going to delve into here a little bit. Overall, I, I like the way that the league is shaping up, but if some teams don't pull their bootstraps uh, tighter here in the next few weeks, there could be some serious separation and you know, playoff spots could be locked down seemingly pretty early. Five topics, five minutes. We'll get started in just a quick moment here. Keep it locked to the Dauphin Kings Power Play Show week for week as all also be joined by other guests throughout the campaign. But let's get things going. Let's start with the Swan Valley Stampeders, Dave, a team who has been good over the past few years, has not been able to get over the hump this year, 1-3 and three to start the campaign. They have two stars in Jacob Jones and Trey Sauter. What do they do if they continue to lose games? Do you offload those guys? I would. I think you got to look at that. I think a guy like Alex Walicki could bring in something. Darius Maxey has uh, is had a noticeable impression this year as well. But like you said, those two big stars are going to net a pretty good return for players down the road if Swan Valley's looking to kind of retool on the go. The most concerning thing, Darnell, though, is they've given up 20 goals in four games. I can't remember a Swan Valley team that's ever done that at this point of the year. Now, I think it's safe to say guys these days, they want to go to winning teams. Swan Valley, a, a small community in northern Manitoba, if they continue to struggle and perhaps go into a rebuilding phase, is that going to maybe uh, hinder and hurt recruiting moving forward? I don't think so. Again, I think Swan Valley's got a really good reputation around the country. Barry Wolf is an excellent coach, and the community is an up-and-coming, a potential new arena down the road as well is going to help. Uh, winning in a, in a certain season is what 20-year-olds and 19-year-olds think about. But if they're looking at maybe 17 or 18-year-olds for a year or two down the road, they're not looking at necessarily winning right away. They're looking at developing on the ice. So if they want to go young, I think Swan can swing big with a couple of moves. And there are some teams in this league and beyond that would pay a pretty good price for a, a Jones or a Sauter. The Swan Valley Stampeders struggling. The Dauphin Kings are not. They're on the other side of the spectrum in the West Division. 4-1 and one so far to start the campaign. 17 goals for among near the top of the league there. But uh, most impressively, only 8 goals against. In your opinion, Dave, how legit is this team? Oh, I think the defense is 100% legit. I think on paper, everybody was kind of talking that Dauphin might have some of the best defense overall in the province. And then when you pile that on with good goaltending, you're going to have success. I don't know if the offense is for real yet or not. They have some pieces there. They've got one of the top rookie scorers in the MJHL, uh, but they're only scoring two or three goals every game outside of Game 1 versus Swan Valley. Is the offense going to be there to help keep that defense as successful as it is? If the offense doesn't fire on all cylinders all season long, is their defensive tandem and goaltending enough, though? No, it's not. And, and you can limit shots. You can li limit dangerous chances. You can keep those high danger scoring chances down. But as we just saw with the Toronto Blue Jays, you have to score if you want to be successful. It doesn't matter how good you are in other areas. So if they can continue to find ways to produce offense, and again, they've got the pieces that can be deep enough and they need that throughout a year, that's going to help alleviate the pressure on the defense. But if they're going to fold down and, and try and win games 2-1, 3-1, that'll wear down a decor, and that's a really hard thing to do throughout a year. What a disaster for the Toronto Blue Jays. I am certainly on the bandwagon of fire John Schneider. We'll see what happens. Moving on, uh, pleased to be joined by Dave Anthony. Scholarships, I think it's safe to say now more than ever, Dave, 
not only Division Three scholarships, but plenty of Division One scholarships, including Luke McKenzie, who uh, recently committed to Canisius Division One. And you believe this could be the biggest year for the MJ when it comes to Division One? Absolutely. I think we are on the precipice of a year that we are going to talk about in the Manitoba Junior Hockey League for a long, long time. I can probably circle two or three guys on every team that have a legitimate shot at going at NCAA Division One and finding success afterwards. I think the league is really in a great position. And again, it's becoming one of those leagues that players from outside the province see as a stepping stone to where they want to get to. So I'm all for players from all across the country coming in and uh, showing what they can do in the MJHL. I know some people would prefer more Manitobans, but I mean, RHA, the Winnipeg Bruins, the Thrashers, they're producing great players too. It's just other players are seeing the MJHL as a stepping stone and using it. I think it's fantastic. The Dauphin Kings right now on top of the West Division. Over in the East Division, the class has been the Winkler Flyers so far. Dominant, great goaltending, pretty decent offense, defense, fantastic as well. 18 goals for just four against, the fewest in the league. You're going to see a lot of this team, Dave. I'm going to pose the same question. Are they the real deal? I believe they are because they have a style that uh, Justin Falk has ingrained into their DNA. They work really hard and they don't pull themselves out of their own element uh, to, to try and find success. They just wear you down. They'll dump and chase and change, dump and chase and change, and then all of a sudden they force a turnover and there's a chance on goal. I think Malachi Clausen's probably on paper easily in the top three top goaltenders in the Manitoba Junior Hockey League. I think they've got a balanced lineup. Dalton Andrews come alive with some offense. Trent Penner's had a really good run. I uh, remember he was hurt last year. If he's in the lineup, who knows what happened last year, but this year he's coming alive as well, and they got depth. Winkler is for real, and they are going to be a handful throughout the regular season and beyond. Now, it's not the same Portage Terriers squad that we've seen in recent years, but that is the Flyers' next game, and it's not going to be easy, especially being at stride place for the Flyers. No, but the Terriers have had kind of an up-and-down year. Now, they have a lot of different players, a lot of new faces, and uh, I think it is a, a matter of trusting the process and finding ways to win in tough games. And, you know, the Flyers are going to make it tough, and Portage is always going to be one of those statement games. The teams want to play their best. They are always going to have a bit of a target on their back, regardless of their record. So guys like former Kings, Slade Stanek, newcomer Gabriel Laflamme, they're going to have to be at the top of their game, and they're going to have to get ready. If they want to touch the puck, Winkler's going to hit them. So it's going to be a test both on the scoreboard and in the alley for the for the green and white. And to wrap up five in five, Dave, just a quick thought as we're uh, getting quick, uh, getting close to time constraints here. But the MJ Chell Showcase, going back to the team format, I'm not a fan of this being, uh, you know, I love the showcase. I don't think the game should be a part of the standings because I think players try to do too much. They get out of the team systems to try and impress scouts. What's your thoughts on it? I think it's great that we're back to the way that it was. I think it's good that it does account for standings because I want all MJHL players to have a chance at making a uh, a team or an impression with a scout. Not every player is going to light up the scoreboard. Some guys are heart and soul guys that block shots, make hits, are out there in the last few minutes defending a lead and those are the guys that deserve a chance just like the scorers in this league i think it's great i'm looking forward to it this has been the manitoba junior hockey league five in five the inaugural edition stay tuned for more and of course dave appreciate you taking the time today the King's Power Play Show returns in a moment as Darnell Duff speaks with head coach and GM Doug Headley on 730 CKDM.